recta. Stage four of Desafia Ruta 40, and it's time to hit the sand. Today's outing takes us to the famous Fiambala Dunes, which should provide a stern test for both man and machine. Today's special is 345 kilometers, but that includes a transfer of 116 midway through, so 229 against the clock. As well as the soft dunes, there are rocks and camel grass to deal with, and it's the final day on which the bikers can pick up bonus time. Even if he's currently riding in Rally 2, Mike Doherty has made no secret of the fact that he wants to be fighting with the best in the business. And the South African showed he definitely has the pace for it today. He actually posted the quickest time of anybody on two wheels, outgunning all of the Rally GP guys, but with the bonus seconds, he had to settle for fourth place. We know that Ricky Brabeck isn't a fan of the bonuses, but the American has clearly found his speed here in Argentina. He covered the day's long special just six seconds slower than Doherty, putting himself in pole position for the final podium spot. Brebeck didn't have a great start to the season as he crashed out of the Dakar, but he is looking to finish it on a high note. For the first time this week, Tosha Sharana didn't actually claim the stage honours, but the Spaniard has taken a big step towards conquering the overall title in Argentina. After another excellent job at the front, he only lost 36 seconds to his main rival, Benavides, and he'll be setting off behind him in tomorrow's bonus-free final stage. It's a real step up for a rider whose best Dakar finish is 13th in 2021 and 23. He just needs to hold his nerve tomorrow. As we heard yesterday, Luciano Benavides had a tricky balancing act in this fourth stage between pushing hard and taking risks to hunt down Shirena and just easing off the gas a bit to defend his comfortable advantage in the World Rally Raid Championship. In the end, option A won out. The Argentine was trailing Pablo Quintanilla and Toby Price for much of the stage, but they eventually faded and he cruised away to take his first win of the rally. Catching Shirena now looks like a bit of a tall order, but Benavides has given it his all. He can now prepare for a ride home to Salta on Friday. It's super nice because I really wanted to, to be first tomorrow, opening the, the stage in, in front of my home crowd. And yeah, that will be really special. So. We'll see tomorrow what happened and I hope I can finish strong this, this race and looking forward to, to Morocco. Sharona takes the lead of almost six minutes into Friday's final stage between Belen and Salta with around 250 kilometers of special to cover. Benavides has a comfortable advantage among the W2RC riders with Brabeck over 17 minutes off the pace. In Rally 2, Bradley Cox wasn't quite able to match his compatriot Doherty for pace today, but the young South African boasts a comfortable lead heading into the final stage. It's been a tough season for Cox, but victory here would really get him back on track as he builds towards Dakar 2024. He and his team manager, Bart van der Velden, agree that he just needs to keep a cool head to finish the job. The Sofia Ruta 40 is the second round of the season in Rally 3, which is the perfect class for riders getting their first taste of Rally Raid. The current leader is Ardit Kertai, an Austrian of Albanian descent, who's hoping that victory here can help him to fulfill his dream of lining up on the next Dakar. Francisco Moreno picked up his second win of the week in the quads after another ferocious battle with his fellow Argentine, Manuel Andujar. Andujar led by as much as six minutes in the first part of the stage, 
but Moreno slowly reeled him in and then surged clear after the transfer, winning by two and a half minutes. Andujar nevertheless retains his overall lead, going into the final day with 11 minutes and 32 seconds on Moreno. Marcelo Medeiros is set to complete the podium. No problems for Andujar in the W2RC. He is over two and a half hours ahead of Rodolfo Giglioli. This rally has been a family affair for Juan Cruz Jacopini, who finished third today. The Argentine is used to travelling to races with his father Alejandro, but being in Argentina has meant that his mother and his two sisters have also been able to join the fun. The whole family got to celebrate his first stage victory a few days ago, and he is still on course to finish second overall. Yazid Al Raji began the day around seven minutes down on Jacopini in the overall standings and really put the hammer down to try to close the gap. The Saudi unfortunately hit a stone around 90k from the finish, which had an impact on his steering, and he then suffered a slow puncture. But still, he and co driver Timo Gottschalk brought their Toyota home in second place. They remained third overall. Nasser Al Atiyah took his third stage win in four days in spite of a minor problem with his alternator and he's closing on overall victory. The Qatari says he's had a great time competing in Argentina and that it's fantastic for South America to be hosting the World Rally Raid Championship. He was also happy to learn that Desafio Ruta Cuarenta is back on the calendar for 2024, especially after celebrating with some of the local fans. I'm really quite happy, you know, to, to finish today with the Fiam Pala stage. This was not easy, but we, we've been good from start to finish and we, we win five points. In general, we are so happy to come here to Argentina to see all these people and uh, yeah, it's uh, something really special. Alatea goes into the final day with a lead of over 15 minutes, while Jacopini should have enough of a cushion to hold off Al Raji and finish second. Depending on how the points stack up tomorrow, Alatea and Mathieu Bermel could potentially be crowned world champions before the final round in Morocco. Disaster for Seth Quintero in the T3s. The American's been in the thick of the fight for the W2RC title and leads the championship by a few points, but he had to retire after just 7K today due to a problem with his intercooler. I'm kind of speechless to be honest, kind of knocked us out of the championship. We're in a big fight, three wide and ready to go for the last round, hoping to get to the last round, but uh, after this I'm not too sure we're that much in the fight anymore. Joao Ferreira is also out of contention for the overall win here after his gearbox issues on stage one, but the Portuguese driver told us yesterday he would be fighting for the stage win today, and he made good on that promise. He took it by nearly two minutes from the overall leader, Mitch Guthrie, despite running into a few problems late in the day. Today we have uh, almost a perfect stage until the last 10 Ks we, that when the gearbox was stuck on third gear and in the last four some problems with the exhaust, we were losing power but we managed to finish the stage and surprisingly for me and Manuel uh, we won. Guthrie now leads by over 20 minutes but his teammate Nicolas Cavigliasso had problems today meaning Cristina Gutierrez jumps up to second and Austin Jones is now third. The top five are all in the W2RC, so no changes there. Chileco Lopez in fourth, ahead of the day's stage winner, Ferreira. There was a big scare for Shinsuke Umeda in the T4s. The Japanese driver got stuck in a deep canyon after straying off course, but somehow he and his co-driver, Maurizio Dominella, managed to get the car out and keep going. They lost two and a half hours, but the main thing is they're going to be able to finish the rally. Well, meanwhile, this has been one of the stories of the week. In his very first outing in a car, Gustavo Gallego is set to claim overall victory. The Argentine was second today to his teammate Eduard Ponce, but he leads by almost four hours overall. It's some way for Gallego to announce his arrival in the SSV class. 
Obviously, it's my first experience in a car and I'm set to finish Ruta Corenta with victory in the T-Force. It's incredible, but there is still one stage to go. Let's get through tomorrow first. Diego has made the most of mistakes and mechanicals elsewhere to build a huge overall lead. Umeda and Enrico Gaspari only separated by a few minutes though in second and third. Umeda still on course to take home those all important points in the W2RC. Well, speaking of the World Rally Raid Championship, the calendar for 2024 was officially announced this Thursday and there was plenty of positive reaction from the riders and drivers. The season starts as ever with the Dakar before the Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge and a new event in Europe, the Transiberico, which will be held in Spain and Portugal. Desafia Ruta Corenta also features in early June before October's traditional season finale in Morocco. Luciana Benavides is delighted that Rally Raid is coming home again next year. This is really good news. Um, this race has been amazing this year and, and every year is really, really good. Also the atmosphere and the passion from the people, the fans and also the organization did an amazing job. So really happy to, yeah, to have the Ruta 40 again for next year. Well, before we start thinking too much about what lies ahead in 2024, let's enjoy the final outing of this Desafia Ruta 40. Join us again tomorrow for the Stage 5 highlights and thanks for watching.